WFLA Studios. Top stories, breaking news, interactive coverage in the palm of your hand. This is Stream Center Live. Here's J.D. Buno. Sworn depositions unearthing massive new info in the Gabby Petito story. Brian's frantic phone calls home, his mother facing possible arrest, and Brian's mysterious trip home in Gabby Petito's final days. As the scheduled trial date draws closer, we are live to break down what we have learned over the last week or so and what exactly remains unclear. Hello there to you folks. Welcome back into the Stream Center. JB here with you live alongside WFLA senior investigator Walt Buteau. And, and Walt, did you, I think you might have dropped a phone there. Did you drop your phone? No, the, the water bottle. Oh, the top. water bottle. The water bottle fell over. I heard something fall Thanks over. For so I'm just making sure that Thanks you're good, man. Just you could have sure. let it go. Walt is one of my favorite people <laughs> to stream with because, of course, we always have great conversations. Yeah. It's good to have you it's back. Fun. But f- I say fun, but it's interesting. It's an yeah. inter- As I've said before, it's just a great uh, newish form of media. Yeah, it certainly is. Let's go in depth. So we are going to have we're going to pick Walt's brain. We're going to pick your brain uh, interactively here on the stream, and I'll talk more about that in in just a moment. Uh, but first, I want to start off with why this is such a pivotal day in the Gabby Petito story. Uh, everything over the last couple of years has built up towards a possible trial, not in criminal court, in civil court. Uh, the of course. Uh, Gabby Petito's family, the Petito and Schmidt families, have uh, filed a lawsuit against uh, the Laundry family, as well as uh, attorney Stephen Bertolino. And uh, everything is progressing towards trial occurring um, as scheduled in May of 2024. And just three months from now, we're getting really close. And that's why we have a lot of documents to talk about today. Except for the fact that this morning at 10 o'clock a.m., the families and their attorneys have come together with a mediator by the name of, I believe, W. Andrew Clayton, a Florida mediator, to potentially try and reach a deal to avoid trial. Now, there's a lot of different ways that trial could be avoided. However, uh, the one that is uh, staring both families in the face right now is the potential to reach a settlement out of court through mediation. So that's exactly what is happening at this very moment at an undisclosed location here in Florida. I've already received word that there are members of the media that are trying to find out where the location of the mediation conference is because they're trying to figure out whether or not a deal can be struck between these two families. Before we get into the documents, Walt, what do you make of these families trying to potentially come together in mediation and uh, avoid a, a jury trial? Well, I mean, it happens a lot, I think, and um, sometimes the judge wa- orders it, and because the judge may... Uh, has you know better insight than we do, uh, so I, I think it's very possible. I, as I've noticed in my career, fewer and fewer uh, cases, civil or otherwise, go to trial, and mediation is a tool that is used to. Um, I mean, look, it, it saves time, it can save money for the court system. Yep. Um, it's not as uh, public, obviously, as as uh, as a trial would be, uh, because we're not going to hear. If, if there's an agreement, we're not going to hear what the agreement is necessarily unless it's leaked. And we're not going to hear some of the details that were discussed in that mediation. In open court, there would be questions and, and, uh, and answers, and, and we, would, we would hear more details. So not as exciting, if you will, for the public in a case that's been out there in a way that I don't think I've ever seen any case be out there. This case will be studied for a long time with how it started, how it sort of grabbed attention of, of everybody out there. We, it's been so public. For it to end with mediation would be an interesting twist, if you will. Yeah, for the families to see eye to eye, so to speak, on a financial settlement. That, right. and I, look, I'll be very clear w- with what I'm about to say. I've had a lot of conversations with both Joe Petito and Nicole Schmidt in recent months and, and really the last several years, really since this story um, became, of course, the the massive story that it became in September of 2021. And there's there's a couple of different ways to look at this. Joe has has always indicated to me that there isn't a there isn't a dollar amount that you could really put on this case. They want to know the truth. They want right. to know what happened. They want, of course, as you would put it, uh, or as perhaps they would put it, the laundries to face the music, so to speak. The laundries to 
have to answer for what transpired in August and September of 2021 with Brian and what they knew or what they didn't know uh, as that all was unfolding. So, in fact, in the depositions, I'm going to read this um, directly from the depositions because I, I don't want to put words in Joe's mouth if I don't have to. And uh, Joe said, it's in my report, and by the way, you can find my report. It breaks down all the depositions. It's on WFLA.com. You can also find it in the short link on this video, in the pinned comment below. But uh, here it is. Okay. Joe Petito said that there is no amount that we will settle for. This was, again, in depositions with his attorney present as he was being asked under oath questions about this case. And he said... I don't want, this is a quote now, I don't want, I don't give a beep about a dime. I don't, I don't care. I work, I do well. It's not about the money. I want to make them hurt as much as they hurt us. As I told Pat, there's no amount of money that I would settle for, not a dime. That's the quote from, from Joe Petito. Now, at the same time, in my conversations with Joe, I would say, Joe, like, if if this did if this did come down to finances, what would you do with the money? And he goes, oh, it would all go to the foundation, the Gabby Petito Foundation. It would all go to that. And as I've had conversations with Joe, Walt, one thing that he has made clear to me is that he just wants the truth to come out. Well, guess what? Where's where I have it here? We have a. Um, I, I guess we could call this document cam today. Okay, it's all right here. All of the depositions, these are sworn depositions given by Roberta Laundry, Chris Laundry, and Stephen Bertolino, answering questions by Riley. Now, not in the public forum of a trial, but answering questions point blank from the Petitos and the Schmitz from, through their attorney. And you could make the argument, this, this is them getting answers. But when you do a deposition... It's not the end of the story. And it's sort of like if you do an interview as a journalist, mm -hmm. you do the interview, and sometimes you think, wow, I got this, and they said this great. You come back, you listen to the interview, and you go, oh, wait a minute. I need a little more on that. I need a little more on that. And it has to be the same way with a deposition. Mm -hmm. As I read your stories, great work, by the way, I, I, I want to know, well, wait a minute, that could... There's, there are follow-up questions. And you, so the deposition, the way I would see it, is used as a tool. Yeah, sure, it's, it's a lot of the story. It's more than we know, yep. right? But now, if this goes to court, I have gone over this deposition. My, my, uh, my, my, my uh, clerks have gone over this deposition. Mm -hmm. We've gone over it. We've checked it with other statements. Wait a minute. Is that the truth? Is that not the truth? How can I, if I have him on the stand, maybe I get more of the truth. We have more truth now than we did True. when this started, but do we have the entire truth? I don't know if we do. So yeah, if he wants the whole store, if he wants his pound of flesh, the public seems to want their pound of flesh. It seems like with that in mind, why would you settle in mediation? Because we're not going to find out what that decision is we're going to get very limited results if, if this is settled in mediation if they if what mr schmidt said is true and you're him don't you go to Petito, trial mr Petito, yeah yeah Ms. don't don't you go to trial yeah i mean if if you are one okay this all began and i'm speaking now to our live audience right this all began with people wanting justice for gabby justice for gabby became immensely more complicated when brian laundry was found dead of a self-inflicted gunshot wound at the Carlton Reserve. It, it yeah. just became that how justice takes shape from that point forward is, is, is in murky water. For the Petito and Schmidt family, it's finding out what the laundries were told and whether or not they helped or aided Brian in eluding justice in any way, shape, or form, right? So that's, that's what gaining justice looks like. And going down that path inevitably would lead to a trial. But there's sort of the, the red light before trial, any civil trial really, is going to be a mediation conference. It, right. It's going to be the attempts to get both sides in a room and before, as you noted, wasting 
so much money to actually, you know, sit in front of a judge, all the juror members having to take time out of their lives, everything that has to go on to make a jury trial actually happen in civil court. Can these two sides, especially post depositions, now that we really have an idea as to what the arguments for and against are going to look like, can they reach a deal out of court? There's also the, the possibility for summary judgment. Motions have, uh, have been filed. And whether or not there's a summary judgment possibility in this case, or if the judge determines, Judge Daniel Brewer determines that, yes, no, we have to get this in front of a jury to determine as to whether or not uh, the laundries in Bertolino are, uh, are, are guilty of intentional infliction of, of emotional uh, distress. So I'm, I'm looking here at the, at, the, at the bat phone, if you will, keeping an eye on text messages because we're staying very close to the mediation situation right now and whether or not a deal can be struck or not. Um, we're going to, uh, of course, and we'll come back to the potential for mediation later on in the live stream. We have a bit of a special debut here today. Uh, something that we've been working on behind the scenes really for, uh, I've been working on it for a long time. And it is the ability for us to take interaction with our audience to the next level. Walt doesn't even know about this. It's so yeah, top secret. You told me a little bit about so it. Top secret. It's good tease. Not even my stream partner here knows what we are unveiling, but it lives on your phone and, and really in the palm of your hand by going to www.heyjb.live. This is going to take you to what is called the control panel. It is uh, never before done in the history of interactive news. It is a control panel in the palm of your hand that gives you the ability to influence the content that you see on screen even going as far as getting your name on screen. You see the scrolling ticker on the bottom. It says stream team. These are people that have been engaging with us through www.heyjb.live. And we are going to be able to take interactive journalism to the next level on this live stream and future live streams by bringing in our audience, no matter where you are on what platform and allowing you to answer questions as we bring them up here on the live stream, which is really cool. Also as well, we, hey JB has, has grown far. <laughs> it was hashtag hey JB was never supposed to be a thing. That was just kind of a, a means for us to get comments from people. And, and it was never supposed to be a thing, but it became a thing. And, um, but I, you know, how many times that I've gotten emails from people while after a live stream is done and they'll say, <clears throat> I, I put in my comment 40 times and I, I never got on screen I tried so hard. I tried on Twitter. I tried on Facebook. I tried on YouTube. I tried everywhere, and, and my question never made it, and people would be really frustrated. Guess what? We have a magical solution for you today, and it is through www.heyjb.live. Now you have a direct connection to the Stream Center to be able to get your comment basically at the front of the line. Think Disney World Fast Pass. Right. Okay. So instead of getting muddled up in, in all the Hey JB or Hey Walt questions and comments, you now have the ability to basically become a stream VIP, jump to the front of the line, and, and your comment will stick on my screen until I grab it. Hopefully that makes sense to people. But again, it's all through the interaction on www.heyjb.live. That takes you to the control panel where you can interact with our, with our stream. And so I'm going to be keeping an eye on some of the comments and I haven't had any VIP comments come in just yet, but I'm really, I'm looking forward to debuting that. So if you are, if you really want your voice to be heard, guess what you, you now have, we can't do, you know, other live streamers Well, they do, uh, they do super chats, which is where, I don't know if you're familiar with that, you know, where super chat. So super chat is when people pay and make a donation to the streamer. We can't do that in the news industry. That's just, it, it doesn't fall within the scope of what we yeah, do. Yeah, that's like paying for interviews. Every so often we'll get somebody yeah. <clears throat> who agrees to do an interview for a particular story <clears throat> and they say, can I get paid? And I, right. I, I don't no, do that. No, I've that's, never that's, done that and I won't, but there are, there are entities that will do that. Yeah, Network entities, but that's, it's, it's a, it's a double-edged sword to do that. You get the interview, but you're buying it. Yeah. So the motivation of the person giving you the information, by the way, whoever does is they would be the answer to a trivia question. The first the person who can get on here first. Right. Though the first the, the first person with a <laughs> VIP comment. Um, oh, and look at that. I think I've got 
a few coming in. Look at that. <clears throat> and the, the, here's the first VIP comment. Great. Uh, glad to, it's from it's from David. Glad to see we got the dream team of Walt and JB. Cousin together. David. How it's got to be my cousin. Your cousin? It's got to be my cousin. Yeah, you think no. so? That's and, awesome. And now, and now they're all starting to really flow in. And I'll try to get to uh, questions that are coming in. In fact, let's get to this one. If mediation is not successful, when can we expect to see the trial start? May 13th is when proceedings would begin in Sarasota would, County Circuit it would Court. is you got to be loosely with wood because obviously trials get delayed so often that that would be the first possible date but again it, there could still be delays anything could delay it more vip comments coming in uh, andrew says i'm originally from port jefferson new york i have watched this case closely as it hits close to home i echo what jb said just because mediation is happening it doesn't mean that it is the end all it's a process one or both sides can disagree with the decision uh, in mediation that's that's absolutely true and this is this is the best part of what we do when we get great intelligent right. thoughtful comments from right. our from our audience that's someone who understands mediation yes they both both sides have to agree yep it's a the mediators are, are highly trained individuals we see this in it's what, in, it's what they do it's their job that's right that, that, that is all they I do always thought mediate. that would be a very interesting job yep um kind of like a judge and a jury in a way and a guide it's you know like you're guiding them it and it happens i think we see it most in the public sector with uh union disputes you know, uh, school, uh, at least personally, uh, school union disputes. So it's not like because you because they want to get the kids back in school. Sure. Mediator shows up. There's you, every state usually has a rock star mediator. Oh, that's that's so and so. Um, and um, and yeah, he's right. It, it, there's definitely it's not as easy as it seems. And especially with this case, T Tan just says testing. Yeah, no, this works. It, it, the VIP comments work. Uh, Victoria, this is awesome. JB, it brings all platforms together rather than you stressing about looking at all the platforms, giving each equal time, et cetera. Thank you for giving Gabby so much time and, and, and caring. And, and yeah, so. Can I ask uh, you something about this particular tool? Yes. <clears throat> are you it, still able? Started, are you still way. able to control it going on so that are you still able? Oh, to, yeah. No, no. I still. Yeah, no. If so somebody what said, is the difference then? What is the difference before than what it was before? Because it bring it's it's one unified as as Victoria is noting it's one unified place for people to be able to comment. So no matter where what platform they're That's on, right. it's because before you'd go, let's look at Facebook, let's look at this. Now, no matter where I'm commenting. That's right. Okay. And it also because it is through our website and not through relying on a social media platform like Facebook or YouTube. It's powered through WFLA.com. Gotcha. So we have more control over the the comments and also to the Good. ability to cue them as as well. Uh, we're gonna get get one more and then we gotta move on to these documents, guys, because these documents and there's there's a lot more to come with uh HAB.live and the control panel. R Man74, congratulations on this new endeavor. Thank you. Remember when Chris met with the FBI at the reserve and came out smiling has speculation been made regarding him making a deal uh, with the FBI to avoid being charged once Brian was found stay tuned on this because this actually we're probably going to this is a good segue to the next component of our of our live stream it also shows though how close uh people watch video in cases like this yeah i mean let's be real he could be, could have been smiling because he was smiling. It had, and and I mean, it's a great, it's a good question. But um, an FBI agent doesn't have the power to make a deal in the woods during a search necessarily. Yeah, no. And but but to, to 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 pay that close of attention and try to interpret that is very interesting, and and uh, and especially with a case like this. I I really want to get to this next question because um, it it now is going to be featured on www.hab.live. And now, now is the big grand reveal of, of where we are taking interactive journalism, where we are taking interactive uh, live streaming. And we can now ask our audience, regardless of platform, this was such a headache in the past with Facebook and YouTube, but this is a big special debut for us today and we really hope that people like it. Um, People now, as we have conversations about the stories that we cover, we can ask questions and give people the ability to interact with our stream content right in the palm of their hand. So we are asking 
on the control panel, again, by going to www.heyjb.live. We're asking now this question, and it's there's no sign-up, there's no tracking, there's no email or anything like that. That Everything here is voluntary. This is you being a volunteer participant in interactive journalism. So uh, I don't want anyone to think that there's some gotcha moment. I will stake my reputation on it. But we're asking now on the control panel, what is the most significant revelation in the Petito laundry depositions? And again, I go back to, we're dubbing this today, document cam, okay, right here. So I have spent the last week plus reading through every word of every page of these documents to the point where, while I couldn't even go live last week because I was so brain fried over reading all of this. Plus I had two other assignments from my bosses here at WFLA that I could not say no to. So I'm way more refreshed. The baby has me getting a little more <laughs> sleep uh, this week too, which is, which is totally- You were a law uh, clerk. Uh, you understand what it is to be a law clerk yeah, in, no, that, in I, that moment. That, that, it was a lot of, lot of reading. Yeah, and and it's and it does. It it can melt your brain um, when you just read so much of it so fast. Yeah, but I've combed through it, and based on what we have learned in my three reports on WFLA.com, we're putting now this question to our audience: What is the most significant revelation in the Petito laundry depositions? And we are going to give our audience an opportunity here to vote, and we're not gonna we're not gonna reveal the results of this until we get to a certain vote count. And we're gonna wait for a formula here to tell me exactly how many votes we're gonna try to get to, and then we're gonna reveal the results of this poll. Again, it is a one tap, one click poll by going to www.heyjb.live. This is brand new, never been done before. We really hope that it works for you wherever you are watching from today. So I asked this question to you. We, we talked about this pre-stream, and I said, Walt, I want you to be ready after reading through this, and I want you to tell me what we have learned over the last couple of weeks, what is the most significant revelation in these documents to you? I would say it's, uh, I don't know if you put these in, in any particular order, but I didn't. to me, um, they're kind of in order, in my view. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah, I, look, Gabby's gone is, is by I think, number one, and 1A is Roberta Roberto's uh, possible arrest. And I'll tell you, Gabby's gone is interesting to me because, and I, I thought of this as I read through your stories. Um, if you had a friend who is involved in something like this, mm -hmm. um, although there's nothing like this, and if you had a child involved in something like this, wouldn't your next question be, what do you mean Gabby's what? gone? Right. What do you mean by that? And so, so that that's would be a reason why I was talking about depositions. Well, you know, did Mr. Riley ask that? He, he sort oh, of did. No, he, did. Yeah. he did, but, but I think, you know, what would a jury, how, how's a jury gonna, going to respond to that, that response? And then Roberta's possible arrest is unique to me because we don't get a lot of uh, inside baseball sort of looks at how the, how the FBI operates. And obviously this is a statement by Mr. Bertolino, but to, to, for an FBI, for Mr. Bertolino to, under oath, say the FBI basically was, you know, it was a, it was a threat, right? That's a, basically how it read to me right. on paper. Uh, you, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that I if wouldn't I were do you. That. You don't, right. It's like right out of a movie. Uh, we don't think the FBI operates that but that way, a, but we sus we suspect it, it, it. They do. Let's come right? back. Let's come back to to the possible arrest for Roberta Laundry in just a moment, um, because there's a lot to unpack there. I want to read to to your point. Um, Gabby's gone, and what does that mean? Right. I'm going to read everybody a part of the deposition, going now to page 56 of Roberta Laundry's deposition, being questioned under oath by Petito attorney Pat Riley, and. He says on line 25, page 56, okay, so if Gabby's gone, please call a lawyer. Doesn't say to you that she's dead? Response from Roberta. I didn't know what to think. I don't remember if that crossed my mind or if I was just so nervous. I just thought that he was in some kind of trouble. I didn't know. Riley ans uh, 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 asked a question. What other possible explanation could there be for she's gone, please call a lawyer? Response from Roberta, a lot of things ran through my head. Possibly they got in a fight and you know, maybe she's gonna press charges against him or something, 
Question mark. I didn't know. Question later on, two lines down from from Pat. Did you ask? Answer. Well, I I didn't call Brian after that. I don't know if we talked again that day. This goes on and on and on. But in essence, Chris and Roberta Laundry are sticking to the story that they did not know what Gabby's gone meant. Bertolino, their attorney, the Laundry's attorney, made it very clear that he brought forth the possibility right. that it could be that Gabby is gone as in deceased. The Laundries say they didn't know what Gabby's gone. He said it, it was something it, it thought uh, after the conversation of how frantic he was and, you know, uh, it was something I thought we had to consider. That's Chris saying that. Um, but, but you know, interesting. Let's Hindsight's great. Like, we know what Gabby's gone means now. So, and I don't want to be the apologist for the, for the laundries here. But if it's your child, and you know this now because you have a child, are you going to go – now, they know more about Brian than any of us, Absolutely. more than likely. Yep. Um, do, do they know things we don't know yet about that relationship? Do they know about Ryan, Brian's personality, violence or otherwise, that we they, don't know about? In the depositions earlier on, they talk about whether or not Brian – there was any red flags in essence. Right. Uh, that's my but word, are, by the go, way. You, I'm, I'm summarizing by saying right. red flags. Do you go right away to, oh, she's dead? The rest of us can think that now – because she is dead, and we know that. But but her her explanation makes some sense because gone could be the relationship's over. Now, obviously, as we go forward, and he gets, it seems like Brian. There's more phone calls, um, and Brian is more frantic. Are you more suspicious? But can you honestly think to yourself that you're going to go there, that your child could have committed the crime of murder? Page seventy six in Roberta Laundra's deposition. She talks about Gabby being known to disappear. Question. So what periods of time would she disappear for? Answer. Sometimes she'd go out at night, and we didn't know where she was until 4 in the morning. But she's not our daughter. I'm not going to tell. It's, it's kind of small here. I'm not going to tell her she can't go out at night. And sometimes she would. For instance, we were going to have a holiday, and I, she knew I shopped and cooked and the recipe she liked and planned a recipe, and then she just wasn't there. And I thought, oh, she's not going to be for Easter. And it turned out she had gone back to New York. So the laundry is pointing to Gabby's, um, I don't know, tendency to disappear, and that the Gabby's gone quote or Gabby is gone quote doesn't necessarily mean. But again, now fast forward to Bertolino. Bertolino wasn't... I, I, Great quote, by the way. Shout out to Emily Baker, Emily D. Baker, um, our, our friend here from the Stream Center. Um, I watched her live stream, and Emily said, it's not like the laundries called the National Guard to find Gabby. Bertolino called criminal attorneys, criminal attorneys in Wyoming. Bertolino says that he advised his clients, brought forth the possibility that Gabby was deceased, even though the laundries are saying, we didn't know what Gabby's gone meant. So <laughs> this is really, if this goes to trial in May, massive conversation will be had. There will be tremendous amounts of testimony on the stand. Oh, absolutely. About Gabby's gone and, and, and what I that think, means. Look, it also, here's the other thing we don't know. We, we don't know the relationship. Look, I, if my son, who, um, I mean, the oldest, if, 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 if any of my children yeah. at some point get, to, get into a point where they're, significant other other they say they're gone i'm going to say what do you mean by they're gone and i'm going to hammer that home what do you mean by they're gone like how does I, it does boggle my mind a little bit that that question wasn't asked but we don't know the relate you know parent children child relationships are different and 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 you know um but me and my brothers i would say I think, you know, I think I know how we would respond to that. What do you mean by gone? Right. If, 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 because if, gone's different. You know, he didn't say she ran away. She's gone. Okay. He's sad. She's gone. He, he reflected on that in his, his suicide note that he was sad. Um, believe it or not, whatever you want to believe. But 
but I, I just think there had to be either they didn't have the type of relationship where you don't follow up to that. She's gone. But again, we are we are operating with hindsight and they didn't have hindsight. But still, yeah, you're right. That point is going to if, if this goes to trial is going to take up a lot of time in trial to the point of there will be objections, I'm sure, by yeah, about, b- about uh, having we covered privilege. this or having we covered. No, more like, uh, Your Honor, we've covered. I object. Right. She a- asked and answered whatever that would be. But sure. but yeah, it, that's uh, I, I don't see how anybody if that's not by far number one on your poll, <laughs> I'll be surprised. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, we're trying to get to 300 votes on our poll. OK, that's that's the number that we're trying to get to. Um, so again, you can vote. It, 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 there's there's no no tie in to this other than you just go to the website, hjb.live, or follow the YouTube moderators or Facebook moderators. I don't, we don't have Facebook moderators. YouTube moderators follow their guidance. Okay, well, one and more, you can vote. One more quick point though about yeah. the last uh, comment by who who pointed out he he wanted to hire a criminal attorney. Yeah. What other attorney are you hiring there, though? Ah, well, there's no lawsuit. There's no civil case. Of course, it's a criminal attorney. Right. I'm not going to say it's redundant to say that, you but could, it is kind of. Re- w- 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 we, there's no lawsuit. We don't know at that point. We don't know that Gabby is dead. We we know it now, but it's the 29th or so of, of August. We think she died or was murdered on the 27th or 28th. What other? I'm going to hire a civil attorney. No, you're not. It's oh, it's a criminal attorney. I get that. But it's obviously, I mean, on the 29th, do we know? We know on the 29th about the confrontation in Moab, correct? Yes. Uh, we know about the, that they hit each other, correct? Well, right. Or do there we? Was, there, was, there was a domestic incident. That's Let's just, right. w- without going too far into that that's, whole thing. That's criminal. Now, now uh, it's because, oh, uh, she took my, it was, it was her van, right? It was her, it was in her name. So, it, you know, I mean, I'm trying to think of how it could ever be civil at that point. Like, when? why would you need a civil attorney? Oh, she took my stuff. I need my stuff back. And it's not over a certain dollar amount. Well, that's civil. Um, right? So, obviously, it's going to be a criminal attorney. Not that that's not a good point. Let me, let me, let me, let me put it this way. We're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go, um, go into pretend time. Whoa. That's my sound effect nice. for, for pretend time. We're going to pretend. Okay. Because journalism, you don't really do a lot of hypotheticals all that much. And, we don't do it. We don't do it on TV. Slope. We don't it's do it on TV. But we we do slope. it. Beh- we do it behind the scenes, and then we try to we try to uh, see if we can if the, any hypothetical can be supported. But that's it's different. I, I liked your reaction. Someone will have to make a gif out of that. Like your reaction in your earpiece to to the to the chimes for pretend time. I thought I was about to see the result of the poll. Is what I thought. Oh, no, no, not yet, not yet. We'll get to that. <laughs> We're trying to get more votes. Yeah. Again, HeyJB.Live, we want to get, uh, there's more polls. So we, we want to get more poll questions on screen, and we have to get more votes to be able to do that. Again, go to www.heyjb.live. I don't want to have to repeat myself as much as I, I, I will have to, but we're trying to get to a certain number of votes uh, in this poll. Here's the pretend time. Brian calls his parents and says, Gabby's gone. They respond, okay, w- what do you mean? And let's say that Brian just says something to the effect of, she's gone. I don't know where she is or something like that. There you go. Instead of calling your attorney, isn't, wouldn't there be like this automatic response for, the, for, for a parent to say, oh, my goodness. Call the police. Someone's missing. Or That's call right. the police. That's a great point. Or, or call her parents. Call her parents right away. Like hey, Gabby's somebody, gone. Hey, Gabby's gone. Your future daughter-in-law is, is is gone. That's right. And this is where, by the way, this is this is a the crux of the lawsuit, isn't it? Right. Absolutely. You you yeah. know that he said she's gone. You didn't tell me. I'd be I'd I'd be extreme beyond angry as as the parent of of the missing person. We have a poll question about Gabby's gone specifically coming up later on in the live stream, but we got to get things moving. Uh, I found out right before the show or an hour or two before the show that I'm going to be on News Nation at 2.20. So I got to get, so I, I we have a lot to get to on this live stream and I want to make sure that I get uh, as many of these poll questions on on stream as possible. Again, where I'm seeing the votes trickle in, we need to get more votes to be able to 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 activate the, the results on screen. Okay, R- Roberta's possible arrest. Okay, lots to unpack here and we are going to try to do 
uh, our best job at presenting the cliff notes. In essence, there was the time in the days after Gabby Petito's remains were found. Stephen Bertolino, the lawyer for Chris and Roberta Laundry and Brian Laundry, representing the Laundries, called a press conference with the intent of, you know, feeding the appetite of the of the of the public, of the media, the public that was literally on their front lawn at the time. Remember now, September 2021, you have a mob of people on that street in Northport, Florida, okay, De- with signs demanding that the laundries speak and give information on where Brian was. Bertolino wants to do and uh, and talks with his clients. They they plan a press conference. Now, according to Bertolino's sworn depositions, he says that the FBI agent in New York, in essence, told him, you don't want to do that. Uh, and I'm summarizing here, but it's all in the report on WFLA.com, the exact quotes. I have it in if fact, you want me to read Yeah, it. would you please? Um, I dis- Okay, so he, uh, Mr. Bertolino says uh, that... Um, uh, I got a call from the FBI, and they indicated to me, and I won't say no uncertain terms, but they indicated to me in terms that were clear that I should not have the press conference. I had my suspicions as to why, and they indicated that if I went forward with the press conference, that they were going to arrest Roberta and put her through the full perp walk, including but not limited to statements in front of the camera and everything else. Look, you know, I read that when I read it the first yeah, time. I want, I want your, your unadulterated I, I gotta, response I gotta, to that. I, look, I respect the FBI, but I just think that's a lot of bluster. You think it's a bluff? I oh, Come on. You, you're going to... It's a movie is what it is. That happens in movies. I've never seen that happen in any anything in real life. Let me Anywhere please, let me please that be you're clear. going to parade her in front of it and say, hey, media, shout questions at her. So what? I worked in Mobile, Alabama for five years. Perp walks were part of the routine. That, that was just I get that it. Was culture I there. get that. I get it. But a perp walk with a threat? And what are you charging her with? Ah, exactly. So, so that comes in later. And, by, and one, one, more, of, one more quick point. I, and I, you know, I don't like when attorneys say, my, I'm working with an, uh, an attorney right now in a pr- very high profile case, hoping to get the, um, hoping to get somebody high profile crime on camera. And I think we're going to do it. But again, I understand when attorneys don't want us to do that. For I, I totally understand it. I don't like it. Why are you, you I'll ask you, why is he holding a, a press conference? A news conference. Why would he hold a news conference? The same. The and, and people demanding that they talk. There's something we call a constitution, and they have no reason to talk other than incriminating themselves, which, you know, we're now seeing that they have possibly incriminated themselves by by the fact that they said, in a civil case, that is, they said, he they say that he said she's gone, Gabby's gone. Guess what? That could lose you that lawsuit. Just that it's statement. The entire reason. It is entire the, for this lawsuit. So, by the way, hold on so, one second. I want to make yeah, this point very, very, very clear to our audience. The reason the lawsuit exists. If the laundries had just remained silent and never issued a statement, there's no grounds for the lawsuit that we are currently talking about going to trial in May. The reason the lawsuit exists is because the Petito and Schmidt families are alleging that through their statement on September 14th, where they hope that Gabby and her family would be reunited, That's right. that Gabby would be found, that that, that that qualifies for intentional infliction of emotional distress. If the Laundries had just remained silent and never released a statement, never said a, said a word through their attorney, there, there's no grounds for, for a lawsuit. I will and, say this, though. Yeah. Intentional in a courthouse, in yeah. a courtroom, is different than intentional. Like, I could throw this remote at you. Right. Um, intent has elements to it. And that's why I... So intentional? Were they intentionally trying? I mean, I think that may be a tough thing to prove. I don't know. Now, Walt and I are not attorneys. That's Emily right. Emily Baker, Peter Tragos, the lawyer you know, shout out. Uh, Emily D. Baker, shout out. They did great live streams talking about the legalities of the lawsuit. And um, and and uh, it, it was fascinating to to watch and listen to the, uh, to the two of them break this down. But... Okay, back to the FBI. The FBI is basically saying, do not, according to Bertolino's sworn testimony or sworn deposition, the FBI is communicating to Bertolino, you don't want to hold this press conference. 
if you do, we could move forward with a, with an arrest of Roberta. And then, okay, you ask the question, what are the grounds? What, what would you charge Roberta Laundry with? You're not charging her with the murder and of why Gabby don't you want them to hold a, uh, Why don't you want them to hold a press conference? Why does the FBI not? That's are they, are they, the FBI. Do they, at that point, they have not found the body? Correct? 14th? No. No, no, no. The body has, no, no. The 14th is when the statement was released. The, the possible press conference, I believe, was either on the 21st or 22nd. But the body has not been found yet. No, no, no. The body, this is two days after the body was found. Okay. 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 And, and the day after her remains identified. Why would the so, FBI care? I, first, two questions I'd like you to answer because you've covered this case so well and you know it. First of all, why does Mr. Bertolino need or want to hold a news conference? And secondly, why would the FBI be upset about a news conference when the body has already been found? Do they think, what do you think? The second question is fascinating to me. Why would the FBI not want a laundry press conference? Right. That to me is, is very, very interesting. How does it hurt their case? Because the that's all it should be about, right? It should be about hurting their investigation, hampering their investigation. Um, and, I'm, I'm, you know, why would you not want them to go public? The FBI does not ever go public during, well, I don't know about ever, but their, their, their line is that we can neither confirm nor deny that no matter what you ask them. So I don't know whether that's why they want to button this up that way, but it's an interesting point. Why do they care whether or not the Bertolino, I'm sorry, the, uh, whether Bertolino holds a news conference with his clients? Okay. Um, I'm trying to bring up here on document camp. I'm trying to bring up uh, that point in time, but um, that okay. So I'm gonna read this here. This is from Bertolino. As far as the charge, all he would tell me was that he believed it was something electronic. It was something that they believed Roberta had done with electronics, and the only thing that we could come up with was that Roberta accompanied Brian to the cell phone store, end quote. So that's, remember, the burner phone that we had talked about. So she's so, hiding evidence by, she's helping him hide evidence? She's helping him get away? Aiding in some capacity. Aiding? Some capacity right. by helping okay, him Okay, I remember that. Phone. Yeah, but I have that As Bertolino article. says later on, if, there's a, if it's criminal to help your kid buy a phone, then there's going to be millions of parents across the country that are, that that's, are gonna be, a, yeah. that's ignoring, I think, a very important point about this, though. That's, I mean, you know... That statement's interesting to me, but come on. Here's, it's, it's apples and oranges. The answer to your first question, I think, is, is here on page 79 of Bertolino's deposition. So Gabby's remains were discovered on the 20th, I believe. The 19th, I misspoke, on the 19th. And obviously on the 20th, the press was having many thoughts and conversations. And there was a lot of misinformation out there with respect to the laundries. And I wanted to clear it up. So that's his reasoning. I wanted to clear it up. I spoke to Chris and Roberta about this. And I said, we need to set forth what happened, at least from their perspective. And I scheduled a press conference. I believe it was for the 21st. I got a call from the FBI and they indicated to me, and I won't say no uncertain terms, but they indicated to me in terms that were clear that I should not have the press conference. I had my suspicions as to why they indicated that if they went forward with the press conference, that they were going to arrest Roberta and put her through a full perp walk including but not limited to statements in front of the camera and everything else. That state, that's an, I know what he means by that, but right, right, look, just back that up. We need to set the record straight. Why do you need to set the record straight, Mr. Bertolino? Right. You don't need to, you don't need to do anything. And why would the FBI not want them to speak? It's a great, Can, I don't know. If, man, if we could go. The FBI part is almost more fascinating to me because I don't get, first of all, uh, I'm, we could do a poll on just attorneys, and I would think it would be 80-20, 90-10, that would say, you don't need to put your clients in front of the camera. Why would you do that? Why would you ever do that? Bertolino isn't a criminal attorney. That, right. Okay. He, well, does he want... Not, he, let me be clear. He's not a criminal <laughs> well, attorney. I mean... He is acting you don't in need, the capacity of a criminal do you, do you attorney. Know why attorney. Do you know why a lot of attorneys want to put their clients in front of the camera? For good publicity, good Absolutely. press. Absolutely. It's free advertising. And the ones that are honest will tell you that. And they use us. And then I've had bosses saying to me, they're using you. Well, we're, or, or they have an axe to grind. I'm the, gr I'm the grinder. That's what we do. We're going to let them grind the axe. We're going to make sure we follow our rules ethically and, and factually. But at the same time, yeah, they, they use us. And they, they feed it. They're great sources. They'll tell us stuff. And sometimes I've had countless stories where I'll say so-and-so would not comment 
on the record. But so and so, a lot of times, is this is at least the person who gives me the string to pull on the story. But in this case, there's nothing. I do not see any advantage for them to hold that news conference. That's why the FBI part is more fascinating. Why did you not want them can to hold the news conference? For one second, can you imagine when this story is at its its international peak? Brian Laundrie's missed gone. He's gone. Yeah. Gabby's remains just found. Everyone, it's it is officially a manhunt for Brian Laundrie. Right. One that is no longer. I mean, there were there were stuff coming in for uh, him getting on a boat, going to Mexico, or going to some. Canada. To, I had a, I Canada. had people I had people calling me from Canada who were complete and wait, did we, we it was referenced in a story completely convinced that it was him. they saw him yep. in Canada and then Can we looked you, into how the borders not tied buttoned up up there that you could get across the border up there that all that stuff wasn't true. Can you imagine at that time when you're getting those messages? Right. If a there had been a press conference on the front lawn of that home or b if there was, or maybe it was, maybe it was, Bert, you know, it's never specified where the press conference would have taken place, I don't think. W w but if if the FBI had arrested Roberta, gone into her home, and she came out in handcuffs with the international press lining the street there in Northport, can you imagine the level, the tier of that this story goes into at that point? Now, it never happened. R let me be clear. Roberta Laundry was never arrested. Chris and Roberta were never arrested or faced any charges of any kind. The FBI concluded their investigation. They closed it in January of 2022. And without any charge, the only charge that was ever filed was against Brian Laundry for illegal use of Gabby's card. And that was it. That's right. Um, do, you, do you think, though? Yeah. There's no way the FBI acknowledges that this happened. No way. There's no way. Because in my, in my, yeah, it, 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 and and I would also say that um, that the perp walk part is so dramatic. We'll put her in front of a perp but walk, it's, but no, but it's there's no way. Hold on a second, though. Just time out for one second. There's no way around it. If if you arrest Roberta, if you have an, a warrant, if you have a warrant for her arrest for something connected to, let's say Bertolino's, you know, hunch is right. And that it was an arrest for aiding Brian and getting his burner phone. Trying to hide evidence. Trying to. Could have been electronic in that yeah. Brian gave her his phone. Yeah, we're, we're you know, again now, for pretend time, we're, we're, we're in that territory now. Okay, right. I didn't want to make it clear. You have to go in with the arrest warrant. She's in the home there in Northport with her husband. She's, she's going to come out in handcuffs. That automatically is a perp walk. It's not like people think a perp walk is like this formal parade of, of, a, of a suspect in handcuffs. No. Just her being taken out of the home and put into a police cruiser, but, that's a perp walk. Right. But um, you could also then <clears throat> get her booked, talk to the sheriff's office or the police station and go, okay, what's the longest walk? What door can we leave? W again, if you want to put your sound effect on there. Okay. Uh, what's the longest walk we could walk her into the building? <laughs> okay. We could okay. We'll park at the. We will pretend we can't park near the building, and we're gonna walk her. The, I don't know how big the parking lot is. We're gonna walk her the entire length of the parking lot where it's public property, and the media can do their thing and hammer her with questions. Those questions rarely get answered, uh, but but still, a lot of times for the reporter, it's about the question, not the answer. I had friends that were cops in Alabama. Again, I spent five years in, in Alabama, which was so fascinating for me as a journalist because I grew up in New York, and New York and Alabama are completely different places. They might be okay. exact opposites. They might. You could make that. You <laughs> could make that argument. I am sure. So Alabama culture to me was fascinating, and I, I do miss my days in in Mobile, great town. But I, I remember I had friends who were cops there, and they would tell me, I had friends that did um, cops that were that did perp walks, and they would tell me, JB, sometimes. If it's, you know, depending on the perp walk, I'll just go really slow. Absolutely. I will, I, as, as they, now I want you to picture, audience, I want you to picture like two cops on each arm of a suspect in handcuffs walking from point A to point B for a perp walk and the officers going, I mean, baby step slow, sometimes intentionally 
just to give us as members of the media opportunities to ask more questions and maybe just maybe get more answers. And so and that's a big maybe nobody. I mean, you, you, you know, you're not. Well, the smart a inside baseball, but but yeah, you're right. And it's usually the question that and again, I, I would go back to this point as to, OK, this is ironic that he's threatening a perp walk. Think about this. Mm -hmm. Is it G or Gee? Brian Gee? The FBI I, I agent? Always, I keep mixing it up. I think it's Brian Gee. He's allegedly, purportedly, threatening a perp walk to allow the media to ask questions so that Berlino won't allow the media to ask questions. It's so bizarre, isn't it? That doesn't yeah. make sense. And again, why do you, you put a you put somebody who's not an attorney, and really you put some attorneys out in front of the camera who aren't used to it, they can make mistakes. But when they make a mistake, it's different than your client making some sort of thing that is a, a misspeaking about some material fact. That's dangerous. That is a dangerous thing to do when your client's not who's trained. You and I would probably be pretty good at it, I think. Who's trained to talk in front of the media off the cuff? Um, well, no, but that's why they, they print out a statement and they'll read it word for word. Okay, well, I got that. So reading a statement's different than a... a, a but well, no, you can call a press conference read a statement. No, that's true. That could have been. You're right. That might have been. That is and safer. And then just say, we are taking no questions. But then at that point, if you're going to do that, why not just then release the statement to the media like you have over the past right. several weeks? There's no, look, why show face? That's, there's no reason for it. I don't see the reason. But And again, the FBI is threatening, hey, you'd better not do that or we're going to – you better not allow her to um, answer questions to the media or we're going to make her answer questions to the media. Isn't that what this threat is? I, I don't – right. I'm going to – Let me be clear because we have to move on to other stuff. Let me be clear. The FBI – hasn't commented on Bertolino's accusations <laughs> but they never of a potential we are going to arrest Roberta conversation. We're going to arrest Roberta. And again, this is Bertolino. This is not the agent. This is hearsay. <clears throat> We're going to arrest Roberta and put her through a full perp walk, including but not limited to statements in front of the camera and everything else. Okay, and that me and and then we should add, if you allow her to go in front of the media and make statements in front of the media, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. The threat is the same. It's a threat to stop something that they're threatening to do. Get you? Yeah, it's weird. It, uh, I'll open. <clears throat> look, ninety seconds. I'll open this up to comments uh, on Roberta's possible arrest. I'm gonna start looking right now on my screen for VIP <clears throat> comments <clears throat> first. Um. Um, and we'll, we'll really quickly um, from Shih Tzu. Uh, I, are you going to be reading the depositions today? I, I don't have time. <laughs> Show the de deposition. Yeah, camera. no, yeah, deposition cam. I mean, I, you want me to? How many pages? I is mean, it? does everybody want me to like like story time with JB and just start reading through? I mean, what would it take? A day? A twenty four hour marathon live stream? I mean, it's it's. That's how TV. This is some of the first television was let, let that. Me, let somebody me reading, out. just reading out loud. I'm going to show this to the camera. I hope everybody sees on the camera. These pages on these. There's four pages per one, two, three, four. Right. So that's four. So this Q and A is actually technically 215 pages. I mean, that's a lot of reading. So no, I will not be reading all of it's this. A full day. Um, Hurricane Holly's comment is so big, but I'm going to read it. Um, in fact, we have to readjust our code here because it's such a big comment that I can't even fit it all on screen, but I'll read it here. She says, Roberta did not seem truthful in her deposition. I'm so surprised to learn how much she hated poor Gabby and how creepy mm. the relationship was between Brian and Roberta. I continue to be floored by the laundries, their selfishness, lack of empathy or concern for others, poor attitudes and passive aggressive behavior disgust me to the core. Gabby was the complete opposite and they didn't deserve to stand in the same room with her. I have to point out that there is not a single moment in the depositions where they say that they hated Gabby. To the contrary, I have to. There's there's a there's a form of of correction that we have to have here with even with a VIP comment like this, Hurricane Holly, that. Um, Yo, Roberta I don't. Where does she Chris, get that from? Because I've read your pieces. Yeah, and Roberta, and that's not in my reporting. R Roberta and and, and Chris cl claim that they loved Gabby, that they really did enjoy her. Company. I mean, is it hateful to say she used to disappear? That's just something that she claims she used to do. I mean, whether or not you you believe that that that's up to you as right. a, as a 
That's as right. Just a human being to determine if you think that they're telling the truth. But I can I can tell you there isn't a single line in the depositions where Roberta or Chris say that they didn't like Gabby. You could definitely uh, assume though that because they didn't tell the Petitos about their son's statement, she's gone, which is just glaring to me um, that you wouldn't do that. That you have no regard for her, or and and no def, definitely no regard for her parents right or the people who loved her as much as they may have how they felt about her but but yeah i mean that that to me but i yeah it's not is it hatred i don't know it doesn't seem we, like we, it. we have to i'm going to breeze through these other ones brian laundry's call activity i have that in a report on wfla.com uh, that is our cross reference of the deposition showing you the calls that we know were made most, per in, the most interesting part of that yes, in this article yes. is is that there was one call when he had already been frantic and already said she's gone, where Roberta didn't pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. Now, did she not see the call? Did I mean, was she? I mean, if my son is involved in that, or my child, my friend, miss call. I'm see. going. I think I'm picking up, but who knows? Brian's calls, and then the all the call activity that we know about is in my report on wfla.com. Uh, maybe moderators. Um, it, it, the the article is what what's the title of that article you have it there in front of you i think it's like uh, frantic phone calls or something like that Maybe moderators can you provide a link to to those who are looking for that but um, brian laundry's call activity i think uh, it is should be the very top of the first page on one of those documents but anyway moderators if you can find yeah no it it's the it is uh, to me the most has probably the uh, most interesting information. It was uh, extremely frantic. Brian Laundry's phone calls after Gabby Petito's murder revealed. Um, and it's uh, Feb 20th of 24. Yep. So there's a link to that call activity. It takes you to WFLA.com and my report. Uh, Bertolino says, uh, we're going down to the fourth one on this list. Bertolino, Brian Laundry's attorney. I thought this was interesting. Yeah. Says that he gave advice to stay put in Wyoming and that he was quote unquote, this is his words. Now I'm going to be very clear his words. He was annoyed. The word was annoyed that Brian returned home in Gabby's van and didn't stay put in Wyoming. So, uh, you know, is that a significant revelation to you? And then, okay. Can we, I, one, one quick point on that. Yeah. In hindsight, we, we, we're, the worst be like part of that stream. In, in, in hindsight, the worst part of that is that, that it's Gabby's van, but, you almost, from a de defense attorney standpoint, and I don't know what the ethics are for an attorney here. Don't you want him to leave? Because uh, because now to bring him back, you gotta you gotta extradite him to get him back. Why would you have him stay? If you, he stays, he you're you're setting him up for an arrest because you've already determined I may need a criminal attorney. The optics of this story: him returning home it without looks his worse. fiance. The optics are are really terrible. Unless and you realize what, that the truth really, at that point is she's dead and he knows it. You could make the argument that this story hit the stratosphere when, when, he, Brian, returned when he returned home in her, with, van, in her van without, without her. her. Now, this is, that's true. But in hindsight, she's dead. So he's annoyed that she returned home. Bec I mean, I get that, but... It, it does look bad, but at that point we don't know that she's gone unless they did. You don't know who unless knows they what. Do, unless they do know, right. unless they do, unless that question was asked. What do you mean she's gone? And he told them what he meant by that. The other one on this list is the storage unit mystery. We have a poll coming up about this, and we're about to reveal the results. You know what? We're going to save the storage unit mystery for uh, later on uh, in the show. Let's reveal the results of our poll. All right, we've gotten close enough to three hundred votes. Yeah, but we, we, I would love to push for more, but we just have to get moving here. 62% of our audience says that Gabby's, <clears throat> Gabby's gone is the most significant revelation. Yeah. And really what that means um, as far as, uh, you know, Brian's parents being told that Gabby's gone. And, you and see, you had it in order. Leave. You put it in order. I mean, I thought it was, oh, yeah. in, you know. In a, well, and storage, storage unit mystery. Is, 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 we'll, get to the, we'll get to that. So we, we appreciate those um, participating in our interactive I'd poll. I'd like to know what the others are. Hopefully everybody sees the mechanism and how it works. This is interactive journalism trying to get 
an idea as to what we should be focusing on and uh, or not what we should be focusing on, but what interests you the most um, when it comes to the stories that we cover. This is not a feature that we are just going to have. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's not a feature that we're just going to have for Petito coverage. This is going to be for a lot of live streams. I, I'm idea. really looking forward to Good stuff. Idaho and Brian Koberger and that story getting this kind of treatment so that we can hear from our audience. Let's move on to the next because we got to keep moving on. Okay. Fresh new poll audience. Now log in to www.heyjb.live. Mm. Do you think Brian Laundry told his parents that he killed Gabby Petito? Yes. During the trip, as in the, the, the trip itself, even on the way home to Florida. Yes. After he got home to Florida, where he came clean upon returning home with the van or no, he never told them we are we are we have moved on from the old poll so we want you guys to log back on to the control panel and vote now and in this poll but really this is this this is the case th th this is what this is the you're right massive lingering is, question that that's still right exists. you're right it's back to she he's she's gone and it's bigger than she's gone it's much bigger than she's gone because theoretically i'm not positive about this but your legal experts would probably be able to tell you if they knew there's a crime there Right? There's a crime there if they knew. If he said it and they didn't tell anybody, I think there's a potential crime there. Let's open up the VIP comments. And um, and Tom says hi. That's the only VIP hey, comment that I see right now. Uh, Audra wants to know, why would Chris and Roberta not have asked him what exactly he meant when he said, Gabby's gone? As a parent, right. I would have been more asking more questions. Right. This is exactly over and over. Tell me, son, what do you mean she's gone? Do you, that's your child. What do you mean she's gone, Brian? I mean, yeah, she's right. In, in Joe Petito's deposition, I hopefully I can find it. Well, you know, look, Joe Petito's deposition is tricky because it's filled with expletives. Um, but he basically says he's he asked he, he's asked questions about well, like any like what a what a parent would do. If they said, if they called up and said, my fiance is gone and Joe, I, I think it would be fair to say, and this is my words, but he goes off. I mean, he just goes off. Of course off. he does. It's, it's, a, it's, an, uh, it's, it, it's, it's a question unless, but again, we all parent differently. If you're the type of parent, that's nice, son. I mean, Town then, says they absolutely knew. Um, they absolutely knew what? That absolute, she was murdered? Well, I, I, I think based on the question... Yes, Crystal says, I think he told his mom is, is more specific. Um, what are you talking mom, about? Yeah, I mean, you're t they're together a lot when he comes back. The camping trip. I mom's mean. garage, his parents knew immediately. Queen Weeble, I believe he did. What parent wouldn't ask for clarification? I don't. Well, I, I will tell you, who is it, Queen Weeble? Is that what the name is? I would say, I would say yes. that some parents wouldn't. Having covered DCF stories and DCYF stories up north, uh, there are parents who don't parent, and that is the crux of, I would say, man, a very high percentage of crimes I've covered. And you only find out when they're sentenced. Poor parenting or lack of parenting or both? Both. It is a, it is, you go to a jail, you go to a jail, you talk to inmates, you go, you go to a sentencing, and it always comes out in a sentencing about how poorly people are raised. It doesn't mean they shouldn't go to jail. It doesn't mean they shouldn't be locked up. But the point is, there are parents who wouldn't ask. I would, and I think Queen We Queen I? Weeble. Queen Weeble yeah, would ask. Names, and I agree yeah. with Qu Queen Weeble. But there are parents who would not ask. Uh, it's, I, words I never thought I'd hear my my senior investigator. I believe in Queen Weeble. I believe in Queen Weeble. That's the best part of live yeah. streaming is some of the names that we get. Uh, in my aunt, KK says in a VIP comment, in my honest opinion, Brian's parents knew everything. I want to be clear about the VIP comments. Uh, later on in the show, we are going to take comments regardless of, of the, you know, we're going to try to get to as many uh, other comments right now. We're just trying to highlight comments from people who voted on www.heyjb.live. So hopefully that makes sense. Kim just put this one in a moment ago. I believe in Roberta's deposition. She refers to Gabby. Being gone, and she means being deceased. Lawyer you know, Peter Trago, shout out, brought this up, and I thought it was a good call out. It means she does understand gone to be deceased, just not 
not just disappeared. Oh, okay. that's interesting. I remember that from Peter uh, Peter's conversation, I believe. And um, and Peter, did you meet Peter when he was here? I think so. Yes. Mister, he's a Greek guy, long flowing hair. He's got a mustache now. What do you guys think of the mustache? Peter another Trago's, poll question. Yeah, it's another poll question. Another poll question. All right, let's reveal the results. Let's give another thirty seconds. But let's uh, last call for your votes. Do you think Brian Laundrie told his parents that he killed Gabby Petito? Um, we're trying to get as many votes as possible here. It was either yes, he told them during the trip, yes, after he got home from the trip, or no, he never told them. It's really one of it's it, be, it can't be a fourth outcome. I don't think so you're going to get a single vote in the last one. I'm going to go out on the edge here. I, I, I can see the vote totals. So am I wrong? You're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> And I'm not saying that I don't necessarily agree. I think there's a possibility. No, we never. T- I, I think there's a slight possibility. But anyway, what's the results? What do we got? All right, let's do it. Let's let's bring it up. Uh, the uh, 60, results 25, 60, 20. Uh, of the poll. Do you think Brian Laundry told his parents he killed Gabby Petito? Seventy percent believe that it was during the trip. Twenty-eight wow. percent after he got home. Hmm. No, he never told them. Two percent of our audience. If I, if we're being make believe because I don't have opinions as a journalist, um, I, I think I'd go with number two. Although Diddy did saying she's gone is that in essence telling her? And you, I, you, maybe I, I do get I get the logic behind number one because we all think most parents would say, "What do you mean by gone, Brian? What do you mean by gone?" Yep, I think most people. If somebody's gone is such a vague term, gone could mean deceased. Gone could could mean disappeared. It's, it's a gone, dramatic way. It's a very dramatic say, way to say we broke up. Yes. Oh, a Gabby's very, gone. very. We're, we're done. We're over. We're broken up. Very dramatic way to yeah, say it, though. It's very true. All right, we got to move on to the next poll question because we are uh, we we only have a finite amount of minutes because of um, News Nation. Okay, this. Let me, can I preface this? May, may I please just kind of go into this a little bit? Okay. I remember the storage unit as such a sidebar back in the day. So, yes, please preface. Okay. Over the last couple of years in covering this story, all right, and, and I have stayed on this story. Most, most people have, you know, um, kind of let this story be. I, as a curious journalist, cannot let it be. So, well, actually, let it be. Shout out to to Gabby and her memory. But I the, the there was a question that lingered in my mind and it was the Fort DeSoto camping trip. You remember the camping trip? Right. First week I think it was first weekend in September. Right. Brian upon getting home, Gabby's gone. We now know that he murdered her. Goes camping with his family at Fort DeSoto. His 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 mom, his dad, his sister, others. And I thought, man, that's really strange. If I had just murdered my fiance, not that I could really even put my my myself in that frame of mind, I can't. So it's kind of a moot point. But going doing something as jovial as camping and something as wholesome as roasting s'mores on a over a campfire with your fam with your family, that just seemed to me like this very odd thing. And and my opinion on this is now, after reading these depositions, it just you know what the answer to that seems to be if you believe the depositions is that the Fort DeSoto camping trip was was just uh, them trying to go on just trying to let everything be perceived as this is normal life everything's normal nothing to see here this is normal life that's basically how this reads in the depositions My, my curiosity has shifted now and it goes to the storage unit let me explain um without referencing lines in the documents because that will take forever it's going to kind of break down the what we know about the storage unit mystery. In the days before Gabby and Brian leave Florida, Walt, in the days before, they actually go up to New York first for, for Gabby's family, and then they begin the cross-country trip. In the days beforehand, Brian Laundry uh, doesn't tell his, his parents that he does this. He, he just decides to do it. He moves according to the depositions. This is all according to the depositions. Let me just say that. Brian Laundry decides to move his and Gabby's belongings into a storage unit. Chris Laundry in the deposition says that he found out about it because he found a receipt for the storage unit. He said, oh, this is interesting. Storage unit. Okay, so you're, you're, in essence, you're moving out. You're moving out. You're moving your belongings out of the house and into a storage unit. And, um, 
And okay, that's that that and then they leave on the trip. In August, mid August, Brian flies this is after Moab. Brian flies home. Think think about this. Brian and Gabby are on a cross country trip from New York to, as we now understand it, maybe to a pumpkin farm in Oregon. It's a whole other thing. But they they leave and and Brian decides midway through this trip to leave the trip, to leave his fiance in a hotel and to fly home to see his parents and to move everything out of the storage unit as, as it was described to save money. So it just seems, it look, it, it doesn't seem like normal behavior given, uh, he, he had just decided days before they left on the trip to move everything, all his belongings, into a storage unit. Then he, then he, as we understand it, we don't have this, we don't have the receipts, but it's believed that Brian Laundrie bought a plane ticket to leave from, I believe, Salt Lake City, fly home to Florida, spend several days at home in Florida, and then move everything that he had just moved a few weeks prior, move everything from the storage unit back into his parents' home. And then go back out and reunite with his his wife to be Gabby Petito on and to resume their cross country trip, and it just strikes me as weird, odd, peculiar behavior. Why would it you? It seems move? like a breakup, doesn't it? Have you ever like moved they, anything into a storage no. unit? No, I've done it. I've it's done a, it. It's I've, a waste of it's a, it's a waste a, of time and money. It's I mean, a pain. It, it's like a last ditch effort where you don't have room for it somewhere. It, it's a pain. You got to load everything into your vehicle. You're oh schlepping it God, over to a storage unit. Moving moving's you're terrible as it you're is. You're getting yeah. the cart from the storage unit facility. You're wheeling it to your storage spot. You're you're opening it up. You're dealing with the front office people. You're signing paperwork. You're doing it's just it's, it's, a full it's just day. a hassle. It's a full day. Yeah, it is a, it, it is <clears> almost a day. depending on how much stuff you have it is almost a day. So Days before the trip, I mean, we're talking, we're talking late June 2021. He moves everything into a storage unit, and then midway through the trip has this eureka moment where he says, you know what? I need to save some money. Let me buy a plane ticket, fly home, and move everything back into my parents' house. Not, he could have he just waited until they got home from the trip. Now, look, that brings in the whole pumpkin farm thing, apparently, Going through, in going through the depositions, there was this idea that Brian and Gabby had to go to Oregon to learn to be pumpkin farmers. How, how long that would have taken and how long they would have been in Oregon being pumpkin farmers, we don't know. But we are asking something here because I have a, I have a, uh, I asked this to, to Pat Riley. I called up Pat one day. Hold him up. Pat, I, I can't wrap my brain around this. Why is, and I, I believe I have, I have a recording of this phone call because I, I, I record Pat's conversations in the event that I need to reference them in my, in my quotes, in my notes. And he goes, JP, I don't know. It's a, his words were, it's a mystery. So that's why storage unit mystery is there. Because even the Petito and Schmidt side can't figure out why Brian would fly home mid-trip See his parents move everything back into his home after he just moved it into the storage unit. It just doesn't, two plus two doesn't equal four in this case. So I'm asking our audience. Do we know, is it, sorry to interrupt, do we know yeah. that it's, is it his and Gabby's stuff that he's I moving? Be, I believe it is he and Gabby's stuff. Moving the stuff that they had had together as, you know, as, as being a, a engaged couple. And I'll, I'll double, I'll triple check my notes afterwards, but I believe it's referenced in there as, as it was their stuff. So, like, why, why are you moving it back in? And that's, you know, that, okay. So we ask our audience, is there something more to the storage unit mystery? Or no, it's just, it's inconsequential. It was just Brian just deciding that he needed to get everything out of there. And here are your results. 94% say, nah, something's not right. Or yes, something's not right. No, it's, it's in, inconsequential. Got 6% of the vote. We, 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 just real quick before we move on, what do you make of that? Um, it's definitely, it's, it's odd. Uh, the saving money thing, I guess makes sense, except the flight part. Um, and why are you leaving mid trip to me, you know, hy this is hypothetically, hypothetically to me, you're leaving mid trip sounds maybe that there were, tr there was trouble 
in the van at that point, maybe that they weren't getting along. But then it, that's con- that's there's a, the conflict there would be. Then why are you moving all your stuff back into your parents' stuff? Just keep in mind, context wise, right? Brian's flight home to move everything back into his parents' house is sandwiched between Moab and Gabby's murder. Right. That's right. All happened in the That's same right. month. All in the same month. In, in, in well, order. Why are you moving? If Moab. Wouldn't you throw her stuff on the lawn if you're going to break up and move just your stuff in? You're moving, so you're, 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 you're right. It, if he just flies back, there's trouble in paradise. And we knew there was, we know now there was trouble in paradise because the Moab, yeah, the Moab I mean, incident, right? But then what? You're moving back, but you're also. You're staying together because you moved her stuff into the storage unit. Or are we fascinated by this because is there something in the storage unit that he could have gotten rid of? Is there something that he got rid of when he came back? I don't know. But it is a mystery. June, he decides to get the storage unit and move everything out of his parents' house. And then... Because they're planning August, to live together. They're, right. gonna, they're moving to... And they're going to go uh, grow pumpkins. So, so they... Uh, they want their stuff consolidated, but don't you keep it in your parents' house and then move it after? I mean, I don't know. There's definitely some questions to ask about that. 94% of our audience think that something's not not right yeah, there. Yeah, it's, so. it's, it is an odd thing. Very odd thing. Let's move on to the next question because we only have another 40 or so minutes on stream. And then we, I got I to gotta make time for people to ask questions. So uh, usually our streams are more Q&A. This one, we're trying to get through these poll questions, and then we will get to the Q&A. Next question on, again, open up a browser on your phone, on your laptop, on your tablet, any any web browser, and go to www.hjb.live, and you can answer this question. Will the lawsuit make it to a jury trial? Let's check my phone. Mm. I have not gotten any significant updates. Um, so right now, again, as a reminder... We are, they are, the sides are mediate or attempting to mediate right now. They're uh, participating in a mediation conference. The purpose of this is to try to avoid a trial and see if some deal can be reached. Do we know if this was, a, if the judge said, hey, you should go into mediation? Is this court ordered uh, I mediation? Mean, I don't even, I don't even know. I, I have not seen a court order for mediation. But could it have been said in a hearing? Yeah, could it have I been mean, said I, I in, in chambers? Why don't you guys try to work this out? I think that have happened. Isn't that, isn't that like, because you know, SOP for every civil case mediation is like it's it's. I don't it's know the ex- answer. I don't know about. I don't know about every. Expected. Maybe it is. Maybe maybe it is. Maybe that's true. Maybe you need to do yeah. that before a judge wants to spend the taxpayer's dime on jury, uh, court court officers, security, the zoo, the media zoo outside. Trials are expensive. Yeah. <laughs> We don't they see are it. they are expensive. expensive. Prosecutors and, don't like them. And if you can avoid them yeah. by getting everybody in a room and saying, you're going to pay so that we don't have to go to trial because you're going to waste. Basically, they're going to say, look, you're going to waste X amount of dollars if you go to trial. That, that's what it's going to it's going to it's going to be pricey. This is what everyone this is the reality of where we are. It's like being in the on deck circle and like, OK, this but, is what we're facing now. If you take Joe Petito at his word and I do, right. he want you, you, mediation does not accomplish what he said in that deposition. It does not accomplish that. He wants them on the stand to answer follow up questions about what do you mean you didn't ask what she's gone meant? You're under oath. I'll remind you, you're under oath. Mm-hmm. What do you mean by that? Um, that's the that's an opportunity for Joe and the whole family to get some answers. Um, and it's incriminating as heck. No matter again, what the answer, you is. could make you could make the argument that through the media, everything the laundries that would what they would say under oath is right here. I, exactly what they would say in a jury trial is is right here because these are sworn depositions now, and we now know what the laundries would say if they took the stand. We don't know. That's true. And, and here's the thing. That's why, that's why it's, that's the best part of every legal uh, TV show or, or the, the gotcha moment, right? Uh, I know this. Could Riley but can I, weave? I'm going to practice. I'm going to, pr- you know, what do you think, law clerk? What do you think? legal expert what do you think oh you should really hit home on this because and again it's the same reason why an attorney does not want to hold a news conference for two people who are 
suspected of this or that. You don't want to do that because they're human. It's not AI. They're human and they're go they could answer, they could come up with an answer where the court and this is what you wait for, right? We see it in every movie. <gasps> the gasp in the courtroom. They broke her. A few it good happened, men. It happened in, in depth versus heard. It, 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 it's that's happened, right. It happens in so many that's high profile right. trials right. when there's no reason to settle this the, for the petitos. There's no reason the settling is only for the laundries. It's not for the petitos unless they and I take them at their word at their daughter, they would give anything to get her back. So I it is not about money. I, I take them at their it, it a lot of times is. It's the only way we can punish, really, right? How else can you punish? It's a civil case, so it's about money. You know, I'm a big baseball guy, and spring training around the corner here. Actually, we're basically in spring training now. And every year, before the season begins, there's all these projections. Who's going to have the most wins? Who's going to make it to the World Series? And basically, computer models that will try to predict right. the output right. of it. But you can't predict what can really happen in an in a baseball season, in a 162 game season, just like you cannot predict what will actually happen during a jury trial. That's right. So is the deposition satisfactory for Joe Petito? He's saying that there is no amount of money, no amount of money that will get him to settle now. But at the same time, and by the way, those you, you're the, are, you have those depositions. The world doesn't have those depositions. Those aren't public record, right? So, right. Okay, so the point would be, you're, you're reporting well, no, I mean, it, but, no, but the, the, the one caller wants to Anybody can read. access them, though. I, I'll, I'll tweet them all out. I mean, they're... they're right. You can, you can okay. PDF. right. But without you, they're not out there, correct? No, well, the court portal is, is public record. The, deposi the depositions are... are Sometimes, they're Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're not. Well... Sometimes depositions are not. But... I'm trying to remember if they were public or if I had to request... Access now. Now it's now it's fuddled. Well, people won't go through all that. But the point would be yeah, the lot. point would be the point would be um, the the general public does not know those depositions inside and out. Um, so, yeah. Let's go to the just. The, well, I'm going to give everybody another minute or two to vote on this poll. Will the lawsuit make it to a jury trial? Also, have to state the, there could be summary judgment by the judge who just determines, hey, look, we know what this is going to be. We're going to avoid trial and, and issue summary judgment. We don't... Um... Have the Petitos filed a motion? The Petitos and the Schmitz, have they filed a motion for summary judgment? Uh, Bertolino has. Bertolino right. Has. So the Petitos, obviously the Petitos haven't. So, which is another reason why I don't think mediation is going to work. Every defense attorney... Files that motion. Printed it. But no, but Bertolino, Bertolino filed a motion for summary judgment. And even though I don't think I, oh, look, our good friend, Emily, good seeing you. I don't, I, I love that I can see who's, uh, who's commenting along with us here. Emily DB. Okay. So have you, have you met Emily? I don't know if you've met Emily. Emily, meet Walt. Hey, Emily. Our, our senior investigator, Walt. Um, has covered this case for me from from very very early on, really from from the get go. Emily is um, uh, I'll just use her words: the internet's go to legal analyst who has been with us on stream before and uh, a great friend of the program. Um, I, I, I I'd like to. Th so I'm the one public of can read fans. them. The public can read them though. What, yeah, I'm sorry. Let me read the comment. I'm just so so delighted to see Emily uh, in our comment section. That I, I forgot to read the comment. Emily says the depositions are public. They were filed with the summary judgment motions. Yeah. So there you go. That I, sometimes in the court portal, but I have to hit a button as a media member to request but access. If, you, I don't if you're the that parent, if you're the parent and you want this out there, you want these people's feet held to the fire, the depositions aren't enough, to, in my opinion. You want a courtroom, you want a jury of their peers, you want coverage, you want. You know, we've lost something. We want you to tell the public what you knew and when you knew it. Right. The and depositions huge... don't really do that. They get close to it, right? Yep. They Massive get... difference between the depositions and the words being made public versus them being called to the stand, That's right. having to sit there, and, face the cameras, face the lights, and face the questions and, in real time. And, and that 200, 310 hours of reading over there is going to be condensed 
into, you know, again, they're going to go over those depositions and they're going to say, oh, we got to hammer this point. We got to hammer that. That's just the that's the intro to the movie. That's the prologue. You know, in the actual courtroom, you're going to establish some foundation of what wh who, whoever is on the stand. And then you're going to hone in on that and you're going to look for them to be inconsistent with what they said in the depositions is what you want to show the jury. And you catch them. You bring up the records. And wait, wait, like, wait, 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 wait. Go yeah, to yeah, line yeah. five. So you, so, so yeah, that, but so I don't think it's, it does, it doesn't, if you take Joe at his word, it doesn't seem like the depositions are enough. Emily, but, if you want to shout out uh, a percentage chance that this goes to trial in May as scheduled, let me know. I'll, I'll look for, I'll look for your, uh, your, it's, it's easier to see her profile picture because, you know, the purple hair, the flowing purple hair, purple's her <laughs> thing, man. Emily, Emily loves purple. And, Very cool. and so uh, the purple hearts are flowing in our comments. And again, section, you're not really saying cool. go to make it to a jury trial in May. You're saying make it to a jury trial. If I was going to say, I don't think it's going to make it in May. I don't think it's going to happen in May. Mm. But I, mean, I, just, I just am used to delays for trials. I think that this has been put off enough by enough pretrial motions maybe. that May, yeah, May seems like yeah. if it's going to happen in May is going to be it. Um, I mean, there was, a, I think, like a a case management deadlines motion that was filed. But I mean, it, it ever, to my understanding with the case is that may looks like a pretty likely there you window. Go. There you go. Um, and, uh, aha, uh -huh, Emily, <laughs> Emily, at this point I might even just bring you in on zoom. Uh, they want to talk about that burn after reading letter in court. Oh yeah. That's yeah. a whole other thing. We did an entire, I've done videos on the burn after reading letter and that could really you know, push us back. So, um, but I will, um, yeah, the burn after reading letter that again, for those unfamiliar, yeah. that is what it's a Roberta, really good a letter, a handwritten letter, a note that Brian received from Roberta, um, and is quite peculiar. I'll just leave it at that. Um, uh, that, that Emily's pointing to that being a significant piece of evidence that would be the, on display in an actual trial and, and uh, Emily commenting here. Hey, JB, I think the Bertolino has a stronger argument on summary judgment. I think the laundries will see trial. Oh, Emily breaking some news here with her fingertips. Um, I, I, and I, I, I wholly respect her opinion because she um, has, has tremendous experience both in court or, or, or really on the legal side. And then of course on the, analysis side and so she is saying she thinks that the laundries will see trial but that maybe Bertolino has a strong argument towards summary judgment and, and let me remind our audience Bertolino was added as a defendant that's right I he, didn't I didn't I didn't get what she was saying at first but now she's talking Bertolino the defendant not Bertolino the attorney yes yeah. Pat Riley filed the lawsuit on behalf of Gabby Petito's parents against the laundries and then filed a motion later on a motion that we covered extensively here on stream to add Bertolino as a third co-defendant. And what she is saying here is that uh, Bertolino has a stronger argument on the summary judgment. Fascinating. All right, let's reveal the results of this poll and see exactly how many people think that the lawsuit 70, will make 30. it I'm going to 70, a 30. jury trial. 70, 30. You're going 70, 30? 82, tw uh, 82, 28. Oh, Eight, wait, wait, did you say 82? <laughs> I caught you on some bad math. I caught you on some bad math. 82, 18. All right. Yeah. 84, 16. So 84% of our audience thinks that it will make it to a jury trial. Uh, yeah. I'm curious if Emily um, has, a, has a thought on whether or not that, it, does she agree with our audience that there's about an 84% chance that this actually goes to trial, 16% that it it doesn't make it. And, and again, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on my phone. You know what? Let's just, let's just see if we can get any update on how mediation is going. Because that again, they're meeting in a mediation conference right now, and yeah, just keep keep paying attention to what's going on. Okay, let's go to uh, Aline, and then we'll go to the next. Uh, I think it's the final poll question. In my opinion, the Laundries knew what he did to Gabby, and they need. Um, I think yeah, need to lose everything. Gabby's parents are so nice. I met them at her memorial service. Her father was in shock that I drove three and a half hours from Trenton, wow. New Jersey. Wow. 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 Aileen. The impact of the, yeah. the, this is, this goes to the fact 
that uh, Gabby Petito had put herself out there as this vibrant personality, and that and that even if you didn't follow her, alert, no doubt. even if even if you didn't follow her while she was doing it, afterwards she drew you in because of just you know she she was telegenic um, and bright and you know and I mean bright like bright like she had an, a a good aura about her on camera if you will, and that somebody the, these folks really feel they knew her because she wanted them to knew, know her. And that's what made this case, I think, as fascinating as anything. Really quickly, I want to get to just two comments. Erica says, native Rhode Islander here. We miss you, Walt. Uh, yeah, Not a native. New I was raised by natives, but I was there a long time. But yes, thank you. Rhode Island's great. And love then, Rhode Island. Natalie, I love this question. It's a great question, Natalie. Hashtag, this is from YouTube, so we're dipping into YouTube here in addition to the VIP comments. Uh, hashtag KJB, what is the end goal of all this? Joe said he doesn't care about money, and it won't bring justice. What's the end goal? It's a perfect segue. Absolutely. Absolutely perfect. It's almost as if I scripted <clears throat> it myself. You read it, though. You read what his end goal is. He wants he wants to know. Our, our final poll question interactively here on stream. Again, you can go to heyjb.live to vote. Will there ever be justice for Gabby Petito? You can vote very simply yes or no. And I bring this up because in my initial report on the depositions, I'm going to read this. From my reporting. This is from WFLA.com. When asked if Brian's death allowed him to escape accountability, Joe Petito said Brian Laundrie took the quote-unquote coward's way out, preventing his family from getting justice. Quote, and by him dying, you were not able to get justice, is the question that he was, uh, that he was asked uh, as, as far as Joe Petito. Joe Petito responding, quote, there will be no justice for Gabby Petito, end quote. Another follow-up question to Joe. Does this lawsuit have anything to do with you seeking justice? Joe responds, this lawsuit has, is, is to get a sense, but no, it's really to hold people accountable yeah. for their actions and their choices, end quote. So when you lose a child, question, there's, there's no justice when you lose a child. When you lose your life, there's no justice. There's absolutely no justice. Not even the death penalty. Did did justice elude the Petito and Schmidt family the moment that Brian Laundry yeah, took his own life? Absolutely. Well, no, I, mean, I think you, it, it eluded your... them the moment he took her life. Is then it, so there's you're no that if, justice. If, if Brian was in a jail cell today, a prison cell, does it make them feel any better? Do, is that justice? You're, you're, I'm asking you as a parent. No, it's not no. justice. No. No, because it's not. What if it was a capital crime? I don't look. That's my child, and and Brian's not my child. My child's gone. I, whether he gets the death penalty or not, there's no justice for Gabby Petito ever. There just isn't. Is there account? I think Joe hit the nail on the head. Accountability, one hundred percent. Accountability is important. But what what is what does justice mean? Justice to me does not. The, the Gabby Petito is still gone. Mm -hmm. And the moment she took her last breath, um, there was no chance for justice for her, no matter what happens. And maybe I have a def di different definition of justice. Uh, I look at it as, as fairness. It's just not fair, you know, when somebody loses their life. I don't care what happens to the other person. Justice means that word means different things to different people. Uh, Team Brittany, one of our YouTube moderators, say, say here that losing a child equals losing uh, your own life. And, and that's the opinion of one of our one of our great YouTube moderators. Um, I totally agree with that. At least part of your life. It, I don't. It, it's, it, it's a it, it's it's dense subject matter, no doubt. Yeah. And um, and look, Joe Petito is of the opinion that there will never be justice for Gabby Petito. Now, let's pretend time. To break up the the moment here for a second but let's say let's just fast forward in time maybe we're hitting the fast forward button on this story let's say it does go to trial in may the laundries take the stand and the laundries are found to be responsible or guilty of intentional infliction of emotional distress and have to pay some otherworldly sum of money to gabby petito's family who then in turn 
take that, those funds, what they do receive, and spin that or, or re, <clears throat> redistribute that directly into the Gabby Petito Foundation. Now, I remember, ta- I remember hearing Emily. Emily said that this, this case, if I, I remember what con- I don't remember what context she mentioned this, this comment on, but she said that there's undoubt this would live in the world of appeals for so long. That's in that, true. In that scenario, that there would be appeals launched left and right to uh, delay any type of, you know, uh, financial punitive damage, punitive going one, from one side to the <laughs> that's other. True. And, that and, is and the, that's true. And Emily, the, feel free to co- yeah. clarify your comments. I know you're in our comment section. I, I, um, I does that would that I mean that would undoubtedly be oh you know. Well, a, if you need victory. the money, if you want the money, then that's that's a problem. Because look, it, there's no way the laundries are going to agree to some decision by a mediator, if and and and, and say yeah, um, but you know what, Mister, uh, you know what, Mister and Mrs. Petito and Mister the Schmitz, do you know what? You can go talk about this case as much as you want now. You can go go out there and go. That's just not going to be part of it. There's just no way. And so, with that in mind, I would think again, taking them at their word, they want they want someone's feet held to the fire. They want accountability. They don't care about the appeals process at that point, right? Because they they wouldn't even care at that point if it got overturned because they the the because there were you, there was a they they got their day in court. They got their day in court to say, hey, these guys, and they 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 should they did something wrong here. And I think I would like to say it's a message to another parent out there that would do the same thing trying to protect their child if that's what happened here. Uh, but you know, going I, I will say, if not justice, the fact that a a large chunk of money could be put into this foundation, and there are plenty of foundations that don't do enough. I mean, they're out there and they get money, but I I would suspect when you know somebody will lean into a foundation like that, it could save lives. It could save somebody else's life 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 by helping them get out of a a a, uh, a dangerous situation. Right? Isn't that what it would be about with the Gabby Petito Foundation? And there's there's definitely something close to justice there where the death means something saves other lives, helps other people get out of bad relationships. There's something to be said for that. Patty's opinion, justice equals accountability and truth. In my opinion, the Petitos will never get that. The Laundries will never give them that. Okay. Um, let's see here. Emily's uh, commenting back that the, I think that's the, oh yeah, IIED, so intentional infliction of emotional distress law in Florida hasn't been used this way. Whatever happens, the Court of Appeals will be involved for years. I think Gabby's parents want and deserve answers. Hopefully, they will get them right. Very good point. Yeah, the the and I didn't know that chances, by the way. So I uh, yeah. I, yeah, I think that Emily is is what Emily is getting at with this comment is that the scenario that I laid forth, where by uh, the laundries are are defeated in court, the Petito and Schmidt side emerges victorious, and then like by Christmas time, there's like a, a fat you know million dollar check going from one side to the other. That's just that that scenario really doesn't ex- it, it doesn't exist because of the inevitability of appeals. One of the coolest things about the law is it's a living thing. So mm-hmm. what she points out there if true if it has not been used this way, well now it's going to get used this way and theoretically the higher courts could say we're never using it this way again, we're tossing it or we're not tossing it, it eventually gets paid out, it eventually gets it comes to an end. Or, you know, another scenario is you don't want to appeal, you want us to appeal this or do you want to settle afterwards the the cat's already out of the bag you got them on the stand or whatever you had the, you you got to ask your questions you got your day in court let's avoid the appeals let's settle you can settle after you know couldn't you i don't know if you know if i i don't know if that's true or not i believe you could though that's why having a legal expert is always great could you Oscar. set can you settle a but, civil case you get a jury decision couldn't you settle? Could you then settle after? I think you could settle at any point. Right. Okay. Let's. W- but but once once it's in the hands, of, once once the judge has a jury decision, I, I believe really it's it's the court that of of course is then in control of really the the case itself. From that point, you have a jury's verdict. You have a decision that was you know 
that was Let's, rendered in in your ask courtroom. My, my favorite and, but, attorney, Google. Um, <laughs> Why well, ask Google? We got Emily here, but um, maybe she knows the answer to that. Look, I want to I want to close this this poll and show everybody uh, the result on screen. Will there ever be justice for Gabby Petito? And an even seventy five percent of our audience say no, and, and agree with you, Walt. That uh, that that no, there will that, and agree with Joe Petito. Joe Petito is the reason we're asking this question. Yeah, he said point blank, there will never be justice for Gabby Petito in his in his view, and seventy five percent of our audience agrees with him. So, um, and that. With 15 minutes remaining uh, in the stream, that brings us to our live Q&A. Full range. Anything's on the table. Uh, VIP comments get treated first, but hashtag KJB on YouTube, hashtag KJB on Facebook, or hashtag hey Walt anywhere. We're going to bring in any comments from anywhere, but VIP comments from www.heyjb.live will come in first. So, um, And you can submit your comments now. Uh, oh, Emily, Emily's uh, got it. Got, you, you, don't, you don't need Google. You got Emily D. Baker in our comment section. Where yes. We're honored. Yes, you can settle after while the that. debt yeah. versus herd was settled, settled on That's appeal. That's exactly yeah. right, Emily. Yeah, right. Thank you. And not a, see, and she gave us an, a, an example, too, which is extremely helpful. All right. Full range of questions. The visuals comments. of Let's this story just are striking. Brian's when I see, there. I see, Look at Nicole from, I see, um, I see the I see uh, Gabby walking alive or walk that picture heartbreaking right you get the heartbreak and then you see the the scrawled note that he left behind wet right dampened by the rain just it's it's the visuals are stunning how many there are that really tell this story from the beginning to the end it's and just that picture it's completely even even that the whole thing we've seen it Many times, and yet it still, as a father, um, still strikes me. All these pictures. Yeah, no, and and it's yeah. You look at them now, and it's just it, this story is still alive through people who oh, follow it. It really is. That's, I mean, that's really it. I mean, I mean, if you're watching this live stream right now, this 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 story means something to you. It it, it is something that you still hold on to a lot. Look, a lot of the world. Um, have have turned their attention and look. Well, so have we. I mean, we we were talking about Audrey Cunningham last night, the the eleven year old whose body was found in Texas. I mean, absolutely terrible. We of course we're we we focus on a lot of different stories here in the Stream Center, but um, this one having such an emotional connection to our audience, we 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 constantly push for answers on this story. And that's and, there, my, that's and my it's promise to there's some important points here that need to be made over and over. Is that this was an an abusive relationship that one person should have gotten out of. That's a great reminder for anybody else out there that there is help. Um, and then just the legal questions of how what, how much, and I'm speaking hypothetically here, how much should you protect your own child? I'm reading some comments here. Um, I, I, VIP comment from Andrew, hashtag KJB, there will never be justice for Gabby. But there will be justice for others who are missing because of a similar situation. Look at why the Gabby Petito Foundation was created. Great point, Andrew. Natalie, hashtag KJB, are they mediating to settle? Yeah, and uh, I, I am well, awaiting. Uh, it, it's uh, ongoing. I can just the conf- they the I, they is the they is. I'm skeptical on the they. Are they meeting to settle? One side wants to settle. Mediating. Are they, right. Are they mediating to settle? The laundries want to settle. There's no way the other side wants to settle. This isn't a slip and fall accident where you want to pay for medical expenses because you know you got to because you you can't walk anymore. This is a this is a short of going to trial for a criminal case. This is about a wise man the truth. once said before you ask your question the answer is money. M- money is going to govern everything that surrounds this case but not with this. all how expensive a trial is well, for both true. sides for both right, sides. Right. Right. So there might be and we, we look I'm just speaking in in general terms here. Emily knows. Others who follow cases know that court is expensive. Yes. Attorneys are expensive. Yes. Okay. And so if certain, look, both sides are going to look at the reality of the situation with, with how expensive it would be to go to trial versus, hey, look, can this be settled here and now today? There's another expense too, and that's the expense of emotions by both sides. But I would say in many ways, especially the laundries, because they've been vilified, fair or not, 
They're being vilified. They're being vilified today. They're be, they, they were skeptical of why would they wouldn't ask the question, what do you mean by gone? But the, that emotional toll, can you imagine? Can you imagine that? Emo- your son's dead. To, about, your, your child is also dead. And, and you are being t- told that you did something wrong. It's, it's, it, it, it's very easy to, to envision a scenario where the laundries just want to be left alone. Oh, my goodness. The laundries Absolutely. are looking at this from the perspective. You can envision it. Laundries are seeing this as our son walked into, the, into a reserve and, and took his own life. He is dead at the age of 22. We are, we, they're, they're looking, again, this is how, how they would look at it given their situation. They would say, we have suffered. They have. Suffered. They have. And they would say, this, this is now additional amounts of suffering. Now, the Gabby Petito side would say, oh, wait, you've suffered? Your son murdered our daughter. I, we don't, so... Your suffering, your again, son is to blame for your suffering. Right. I mean, so it's, I pre- think pretend, what they would the pretend argue. sound effect there right. because we're trying to envision but, the, the But the emotional toll is of of going to trial and then of the appeals process. You're, it's going to be part of your life for another two, three, four years, maybe longer. You definitely want it to go away. There's no doubt you want, and even then, it's not going away because you lost your child. Fair or not, whether he deserved to do oh. or not. Hold on. I, I put up Max's comment and forgot. We're going to try to get I, – I only have another I – have, I have 15 minutes. News Nation uh, – I was going to do like a three-hour stream today, and then News Nation called up and said, hey, we want you on News Nation at 2.20. So I got I, I, I got about 15 minutes. Oh, this is a good point. Okay, Mac, I think it's possible that the Laundries didn't, quote-unquote, know – that Gabby was dead, but intentionally. I get the vibes that they would have rather been ignorant to whatever Brian did and pretend like everything was normal versus accepting that m- that their son was a monster. This is a very interesting comment. And again, this is the opinion of Mac, one of our, our commenters who, who submitted the VIP comment to HeyJB.Live. I think and there's so, something in the depositions about this, isn't there? I, I... Um, oh, well, well, no. I mean, look. That, that, that they were they are Chris and Roberta are prodded by Riley in these depositions as to Gabby being gone versus Not Gabby Bertolino being made dead. a statement and so what well he did make a statement that he, he he you know that he basically said you know Gabby's gone the thought entered okay. my mind that Gabby was dead this yeah. th- do you do you ever ask okay uh second this is one of your your stories uh this is um this one I think it's one we referenced before mm-hmm. um uh the second call between chris and brian didn't get ans- addressed uh specifically in riley's line of questioning to chris did you ever ask him what happened riley asked i asked him where i was uh, when i was on the phone and he panicked and freaked out so i don't i i don't i didn't ask chris said after they that did you ask him riley followed up no chris said why not i didn't want I didn't know what to do. At this point, we were told not to discuss. Stephen asked me, don't discuss with Brian. And that's what I did. And that's what I think what Mac, the point Mac is making. I don't want to know because then I know and I'm in trouble. As a parent, would you ever think, man, I don't want to know what, what you did. If you think legally. If you think, yeah, who? who yeah. And having done it so long, I've never, thank God, Never had to deal well, with anything look, like this. But I mean, you could make the argument. You could make the argument that, given how traumatic of a thing occurred there in August of 2021, that the the, the first thing you do is you call an attorney to to help you figure out what to do, what not to do, what to say, what not to say, and that's really what the laundries did. So are you are the you phone d- call histories on WFLA.com? Uh, Bertolino was engaged in the earliest of calls. Mac, this is a great point Mac made that they might not have known intentionally, and I think that is what a, a turn. Yeah, you don't want to know because now you know, and now if your hands, if you're, you're under oath, you're obligated to tell them or it's perjury. I have to make a point. Facebook has changed something to our Facebook audience that's listening. So our system here, and I'll try to be brief because we only have a few more minutes. Our system. WFLA 
plucks questions from social media. And every time that, that it's a pluck, it's considered an action. And Facebook just uh, sent us an alert basically saying that too many actions wow. have been performed. So <laughs> we're great. plucking too many Facebook comments into our Stream Center chat system. So Facebook is down because of YouTube doesn't you have that restriction. Down. I didn't I didn't take Facebook down. I just we were just taking too many comments from Facebook That's and Facebook great. got mad. Facebook got mad at us. Zuckerberg got mad at us because we took too many. Com- <sighs> we took them from the comment section and plucked them into our system. And Facebook's very angry with us. now. Wow. So, uh, sorry. It's automated. I don't want to tell don't you how to do your job, but it. I'll tell you what. That is a side story that you should do on WFLA.com because that is a – people love that tech stuff. And to, just to try to explain and extrapolate what that means is – I find it fascinating. So we, I, I was just noting. I said, wow, we haven't had any Facebook comments in a while in our system. And I was like, wow. oh, it's because we got a notice from Facebook saying uh, you're taking too many comments. Well, okay, so we have YouTube Live and we have hey JB. Uh, www.heyjb.live. So, okay, we got to get back to some of the comments. I only have 10 minutes left with Walt Buteau, WFLA Senior Investigator. I'm JB Buno. Welcome into the WFLA Now Stream Center. We really appreciate your time and joining us here today. Um, let's see, scrolling through and just Jackie. Hashtag hey JB, there's... Uh, an absolutely incredible current court situation also in Florida, and it validates what you said, that courts cost a lot of money. This YouTuber is taking a stand uh, and then puts the name there. Okay, very interesting. Might be might be worth a search. Uh, Tammy, if that combo happened between the FBI and Bertolino, why was she never arrested at all? Because Bertolino canceled the press conference. But it's still a great question. Come, the FBI was not going to arrest so you her. you think that, it's I, a bluff. Come on. You're, calling, you're at the poker Again, table. You're I, saying I'm bluff. Going, I'm calling the bluff on the FBI. And, 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 and Because, again, I, again, I go back to, you'd better not allow her to take questions from the media, or we're going to force her to take questions from the media. <laughs> Does that make any no, sense no, whatsoever? No, it doesn't. And I'm, I'm, I'm with now, you. Now, maybe Bertolino has misspoken on what the FBI agent said, but, but, um, and I, I also, you know, it, it's a great part of the movie, you know, cause it, when this movie's out, that's a, that's going to be a great scene, right? The FBI on the phone. The FBI. Saying, Do not hold this press conference or we're going to arrest we'll, Roberta. We're, and we're going to walk her. We're going to perp walk. So, but that's a great point. Last call for questions and comments. Again, uh, the HeyJB.live comments come in first, and then I get to any, it has to have on YouTube, it has to have hashtag HeyJB, and then I can grab it. Basically is your version of saying, yeah, take my comment. Unless you're on Facebook, which they got mad. You got to do a story on that little sidebar. Come on. <laughs> Facebook is mad No, because us. it's a great way for you to promote the new, the new, your new toy. It's a great new thing that's awesome it's yeah well well facebook i've known some people you know actually i I had a lot of friends that used to work at facebook but they're they've all been let go facebook has transformed over the last few years yeah really has uh dj6 hashtag kjb and walt you don't call your attorney when you find out your son's gf is gone pertaining to a breakup speaks volumes right so if 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 (laughs) if your kid calls you and says "My, my girl's gone and, and insinuates that it's because of a breakup, you're not calling up your attorney. That's a really what, good point. Is what they're saying. So they at it's least, you could, go to, you could go to what Max said and say, I don't, no, 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 don't tell me. You know, earmuffs, earmuffs, don't tell me because I don't want to be implicated. But uh, she's gone might mean what the worst possible case. That's a really good point. Uh, can Roberta still be arrested, says Leslie. Uh, no, I, we, well, d- yeah, there's no, it's just not going to happen. I mean, is it, is it actually? N- no, no, case is closed. The, Has case the FBI is the, officially said it's closed. It would have to be such damning, incriminating evidence that hasn't been that she, yet. she, that in the movie version, she bursts out, I knew, and I wanted to keep it from the Petitos. And I, yes, yeah, sure. But, and even then they would. The defense would be... It would have to be extremely uh, incriminating. And un- what's in it for the government? Smoking gun type the stuff. The government likes big headlines. Just don't let them fool you. They like big headlines just like we do. And they they do not prosecute everything that is criminal. I've seen it. I've witnessed it. 
And so are they going to get enough hay? Are they going to be able to make enough hay by arresting her? I don't, I, don't think, I don't think they would do that. Stephanie, it needs to go to trial to make the laundries uncomfortable and stop hiding behind their attorney. But Stephanie, in the United States of America, we are allowed to hide behind our it's, attorney. It's your constitutional right. It's your, but I get what, yes, uh, I, there's a lot of people who feel that way, and I, I, I get that, 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 that they want the laundries to be uncomfortable because of what their son did. Cynthia says, hi, thanks for coming on. Your dedication and research is appreciated. Gabby deserves justice. Laundries no more than they're letting on. That's uh, a, Queen Weeble, your, your friend, your, Queen your bestie, back. your bestie, Queen Weeble. Thank you both for your coverage and commentary on the Gabby story. Been following from the beginning of your lives, JB. Uh, baby, uh, congrats. <laughs> so thank you and appreciate this new interactive format. Yeah, cool. we're, 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 we are going to take interactive journalism to a place it's never been before. And, and, and it starts today and we're really excited. about it. You're like it. Steph Curry. Because every three pointer wow. that he hits, every wow. three pointer he hits, is a new is that, a new record. That is, I am so honored. By and that. and the fact would be that everything you're you're saying we're gonna take it to a new level. You already have, so everything you do is a new level. This is Steph. what people ask. You know, why Walt? Oh, because this is why. You are are you a Yankee you're fan? You're a straight up. Are you guy. a Yankee fan? Y yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make so some enemies you're by also, saying that. You're also Babe Ruth then. You're Babe oh, Ruth. you're killing me. You can't. You can't Steph Curry is the Babe Ruth of the NBA. We can have a whole talk on that. Well, I appreciate it. Look, interactive journalism is my is my is my passion. I believe that the voice of our audience, if it can be heard, it should be heard. And I believe that news coverage that is a one way street is going the way of the dodo. And I really do believe that if we can run polls, spotlight comments, videos, it's going the way of the hand check. In the NBA. Ah, the hand check. Look at you with all the sports <laughs> references today. Actually, I, I think I was the one who made the first baseball reference, but we love it. Um, let's let's see here. Some uh, last questions coming in. I have another three minutes. Three minutes with Walt and myself. Um, let's see here. Abigail says, "Couldn't Roberta be prosecuted for obstruction of justice?" That would have to be a formal charge by a law enforcement agency that has opened this case again, and and it would. I think criminal, that you, criminal, she's missing a have there. Couldn't have she been right? Oh. Because at this, no, I'm not saying she. I would just say I think she could have been maybe. But what, oh, but again, yeah, no, we see what, we see we see these crimes, and every time I cover whatever the crime is, you have to look what the elements of that crime is to prove it. I mean, did she really obstruct justice? What we think of, 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 of as obstructing justice might not actually be it, but could have she been? I think so. Emily, uh, not only are you uh, not calling an attorney, you're not hiring a criminal attorney in the state where she went missing. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is Emily knows that this is, when, when you look at all the cards that Riley has to play in his deck, they at least go to trial. They, that is the card. There man. could be at least, a, a, unless she's right about about Bertolino having a chance with his argument for summary judgment. There's at least the opportunity now that we've looked at this deposition. I'm sure Riley's much smarter than us about this stuff. To the, at least the opportunity to say, um, well, you know, exactly that. Why did you, if you didn't know exactly what she's gone meant, why did you need a criminal attorney? What could have been criminal that you needed an attorney? And again, I think criminal attorney is redundant in this case. Why did you need an attorney mm. if you didn't know what she's got? As Emily at? said on her live stream, it's not like you called the National Guard to help search for the girl. That's, you, you called a criminal attorney. That's or right. as you're saying, you called an attorney. That's right. And that speaks volumes. It certainly does. And and it's look, it's on the burden of the of the prosecution to pr prove their to prove their case. Bertolino, by the way, again, and I I, I don't know him. Um, he has responded to texts here and there, but why did he say criminal attorney? Why not just because he opens this door, like he opens this door again for the people he's representing. Why didn't you just say attorney? Why did you say anything? Look, we could do an entire live stream about some of the things that Bertolino said in his deposition that jump off the page. Yeah. Bertolino, I will tell you as a reporter, this question hasn't been asked to me, but I'll answer it. I read all five depositions. Which one did I use the highlighter the most? I highlighted here, document cam. Where's document cam? Doc cam. Doc cam. Doc cam. We're going to call Doc, Doc cam. cam. I highlighted 
a lot in these documents. Right, I highlighted a lot. But you ran out but of you I, ran out I, of ink. I ran out of highlighter ink in the Bertolino depths. Depots. I I, I mean. Does like, he watch the show? He's texted me before, and after a stream, yeah. He's he he seems to enjoy himself in front of them. He he seems to enjoy making comments. Just my opinion. That's your opinion. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll reserve comment in that regard. <laughs> well, I, I just, I, I know. And um, I, look, I've had a lot of conversations with Steve. And, um, and yeah, look, um, I, I don't want to, I, I don't want to put words in, in his mouth. He, he has, he, he, he thinks, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to, you know what, my, my the Jiminy Cricket is telling me, you know, I'm just going to leave that one uh, off the table. I can, read, um, I can read between the lines. Yeah, I'll tell you off stream. But um, that's going to do it for our live stream here, folks. Um, I, I would stream longer and take more questions. But, uh, I, again, um, WFLA is owned by a parent company, and that parent company runs News Nation. So... <laughs> When News Nation, you know, you've been on News Nation. Yeah, yeah. When when you, I've when been they on call, um, uh, um, Dan Abrams sir, show yes, a few sir. times. Yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, so well, it's yeah. a great opportunity though, also to get out there and oh, yeah. and to get uh, and a, a story that you've worked on to get that story out there. More eyeballs. Sure. Eyeballs are important. Sure. Um, it, look, uh, I'll, I'll talk about the, I'll, I'll talk about this case all day. I mean, yeah. It's, it's I've I think covered we could. it enough. I, I think I, we could. Yeah, I, I think, think the public could too. Absolutely could. Yeah. Uh, but. Given that this is the end of the live stream, we want to let you know that you can go to WFLA.com to read more about Gabby's Gone and the other bombshell revela revelations that came through in the Gabby Petito uh, depositions. Ooh, hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out, time out, time out. What's this? I just want to make sure I have this clear because I just got a court filing notice from Sarasota County Circuit Court. And I want to... Bring this up and see what this is. Stand by. Could be nothing. Could be something. It's a notice of hearing. Special set. Here it is. And I'll... Notice of special set hearing. Please take notice that on Tuesday, March 26, 2024, 1.30 p.m., Defendant Stephen Bertolino through counsel will call up for hearing before the Honorable Danielle Brewer in Courtroom D, South County, courthouse in venice florida for stephen bertolino's motion for summary judgment stephen bertolino's motion to exclude testimony on the opinions of a robert gordon phd filed on february 12th 2024 uh so uh a special set hearing for bertolino's motions are going to happen again this is all i've gotten email notifications from sarasota county circuit court from the clerk from I mean, really, for almost every day for the last two weeks. I mean, it's <clears throat> because we are getting so close to trial, a lot of these notices, yeah, things are picking up steam. Well, Absolutely. Uh, any other final comments before we go? No, uh, great, great discussion, as always. Fascinating case. Um, I think it'll be fascinating for, I don't know, decades to come. We still talk about cases from the 20s. We still talk about cases from the 30s. This case will be out there, and there may not be another one like it for a long time, just with the, the way that she put herself out there and the way that because of her personality, I think, the fame that she sought, she got, but in the worst possible way. And it's a horrible American tragedy. A lot more to come. Stay tuned. Yeah. Um, but uh, I want to encourage our audience to follow me on social, at WFLAJB, because there is the potential – potential the possible scenario where there could be major breaking news over the next 24 hours if these two sides can reach a deal in mediation just not i'm gonna just say it's just not gonna happen the fact look it started 10 they, they're four I, i'm i'm talking to some people they're they're four hours into it now so if you're having a conversation wall for four hours you're talking about a scenario where mediation could be possible you're talking about what a deal could look like you're, you are sitting down in good faith. So if that, if that actually does reach a conclusion today, I will tweet it out. It's 2 o'clock. Is it 2 o'clock? Right now? Yeah. 2.09 two p.m. Okay, but it, so it started at 10.09? 10 o'clock. So 
Okay, so it, they haven't been in there two. They have not been in there four hours because they had lunch. Oh well, okay. Yeah. No, I'm just saying. All right, all right. Okay, all right. And, and and it does not with work like a TV show. It doesn't work lunch. like a TV show. There's foundation, as you know. Those are you know, but but yeah, is it possible? I don't think it's possible unless the laundries release some statement where they knew this, 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 and this. I don't. I just don't. Unless I just don't see that as possible. We'll see. Folks, uh, pay attention to my socials because, um, look, I'll either put out there that, and I'm getting an alert here from somebody. Yeah, I have to go. News Nation's getting a hold of me. Got to run, folks. Uh, Pay attention to my socials because any breaking news that happens, I'll be posting out there. Thank you so much to Emily D. Baker. Thank you for all of you who participated uh, interactively on HeyJB.Live. We'll see you next time here from the Stream Center.